Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Linda Hollander on the line, and she's CEO over at Sponsor Concierge. Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. All right, and I'm, so I'm excited to get into today's topic, how to fund your dreams with sponsors. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? Let's uh, just jump right in. Tell us a little bit more about Sponsor Concierge. Okay. Well, Sponsor Concierge is about 20 years old. We've been helping people tap into the awesome power of corporate sponsors for over 20 years. Uh, we work with business owners. We work with entrepreneurs. We work with uh, social influencers. That's kind of a new thing that we're working with, people like you who do podcasts and YouTube channels and uh, speakers and authors, uh, and lastly, we work with people who do events because we find that as a business owner, you're not just kind of running a business anymore. You're running kind of a little media company, so uh, you can get sponsors. Uh, sponsorship, the definition of sponsorship is connecting a company to people who buy things. So if you know people who buy things, you can get sponsors. So um, just so that the audience, because we're going to go further into that topic, but just so that the people listening know whether they are right fit for um, for sponsored concierge, what are the types of businesses or entrepreneurs or executives you type you typically like working with? Like, what's a good fit for you in terms of type of company? Uh, the type of company that we like working with, it doesn't really matter what you do. It matters that you kind of have a list or a following or a fan base or some kind of an audience and community. Like, you know, the local guy with a car repair shop, you know, may not be the right fit or the local dry cleaner because, you know, uh, they don't really have, you know, a blasts that go out to people. They don't have social media posts. They don't really have a community or an audience. So any kind of a business that has an audience is great. Uh, speakers, we like to work with them because, of course, they speak to a lot of people and they have a following and a fan base. Same thing with authors. Uh, same thing with, as I told you before, the social influencers because that's really how to make money right now if you're a social influencer because you could kind of sell ads now and then, but, you know, you'll get small amounts of money. Uh, with sponsorship, here's something that your listeners should know. Uh, most of our clients get between 10000 and even up to $100,000 from each sponsor. There is no limit to the amount of sponsors you can have, so this can be quite lucrative and an absolute game changer for a lot of people. And so let's go in a little bit more into some of the nuts and bolts of uh, today's topic. So how to fund your dreams with sponsors. So where, where does someone begin with something like this? Okay. So what I'll do is I'll give you kind of a three-step process to start getting sponsors. So the first thing you want to do is what we call the wish list, the sponsor wish list. You make a list of the companies that you would like to work with. And I'll tell you a little bit about my story and how I got started in the sponsor world. I wanted to do an event uh, for women business owners because starting my own business and making that decision to strike out on my own changed my life completely. It got me out of the poverty trap. It got me out of an abusive relationship. I was able to move out of my little rent-controlled apartment, buy my first home as a single woman. I was able to travel the world. I love mentoring people. Uh, I was able to dump the uh, abusive guy that I was dating. Uh, I met my husband, and we've been married for over 20 years. Um, so all the good things in my life happened because I made that decision to strike out on my own and become a business owner, and I wanted to teach other women to do that. But then when I looked at, oh, my God, here's how much it's going to be to do an event, I said that's, that's when I started to look for alternative funding. And then I found that sponsors will underwrite your event or your business, your speaking, your book, uh, your, your, your show. Uh, so that's when I started getting into sponsors. So let's go back to that first step of getting your sponsors, which is the wish list. So when I made my wish list, I looked at other women's business conferences and saw who was sponsoring them. And those, those are the companies I put on my wish list. The second part and the second step of getting sponsors is the proposal. You need an industry standard sponsor proposal because you're asking for money 
that you don't have to pay back, but in order to get that money, you need to submit a proposal. The third step of the process is to negotiate the deals with your sponsors. And at Sponsor Concierge, we recommend that you get a yearly sponsorship deal. So let's take what you do, that you have a podcast. Don't just, you know, put each episode in there and, you know, 60-second and 30-second commercials. Put what you're going to give the sponsor and all of the benefits that you're going to offer them for the full year. You'll get more money and you'll get more renewals. And the renewals are really cool. That is your cash machine in the sponsor world um, because if a sponsor likes you, they will fund you this year, the next year, and the next year. And I've had multi-year contracts with Citibank and with FedEx and my clients have had multi-year deals uh, with uh, Verizon and Black & Decker, just to name a few. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. And so what are the um, – and obviously those are huge companies. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit to the small business owners sure. there. Are, are, are getting sponsors of that level, like, mm -hmm. out of the – are they, like, uh, are they just a – is it truly a wish list or can they? Uh, I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay, well, there's two kinds of sponsors. One is called the top-tier sponsor, and one mm. is the second-tier sponsor. So um, my very, very first sponsor, and this was when I just had an idea in my head, I was selling them kind mm. of vapor, uh, was Bank of America, which is a top-tier sponsor. But there may be a community bank where you live mm. that really needs you to get the word out about them and needs brand awareness. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Like maybe a credit is, union or something, right? Like credit if you really union, don't wanna, yeah, absolutely. That's great. Mm -hmm. So that is called a second-tier sponsors. And the second-tier sponsors are fabulous, fabulous, because they have money. They're not approached as much as the top-tier sponsors. Mm -hmm. And like I said, they really, really need you to give them exposure. Mm. What are um, what are some of the things that sponsors look for? And I mean, you set a list, okay? So we get mm -hmm. that you have to have some type of audience. But what are some of the other things other than a list that sponsors typically? And again, this is going to vary from sponsor sure. to sponsor, but in general, that okay. they look for in in the type of business or project that they're looking to back. Okay, they look for benefits. So your proposal has to be very rich with benefits for the sponsor. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, they look for demographics. I always say that in sponsorship, demographics are your destiny because rem the demographic is the most valuable thing that you have to sell to the sponsor. Remember that definition. Sponsorship is connecting a company to people who buy things. So you need when I was getting sponsors for the Women's Small Business Expo, I did so much research on my demographic. I mm. found out that women were starting businesses at twice the rate of men, and more importantly, women make or influence over 85% of the purchasing decisions in America. Uh, so that's what really got the sponsors, because I had nothing else to, to offer them. I had no experience. I'd never done an event in my life. I didn't have a big fan base. I had my parents. I had my brother-in-law. I had my cat. But <laughs> that was about it. So uh, that's what they want to see. So we went, okay, so they want to see your demographics. They want to see benefits. They want to see your marketing. They want to see how you're going to get the word out about what you do because you're going to include sponsors in your marketing. And the last thing they want to see is storytelling because people think, oh, well, I'm sending this sponsor proposal to a big company. I'm going mm -hmm. to impress them, put facts and figures. No, no, no. In my sponsor proposals, I put that I was in the poverty trap, that I was in an abusive relationship. And you know what? You want to make an emotional connection. You want to show the humanity of what you do because it's not a faceless corporation that's going to make that decision to sponsor you. It's a human being. Uh, so you really want some good storytelling in there. Hmm. Let's talk a little, about, a little bit about consistency of approaching sponsors, because I know like anything in life and any business, this isn't like magic. Like you don't put in one proposal and you're done, and all of a sudden all your dreams came true. So everybody listening that was thinking that, which is very few, but just for those few I'm talking to you, it's still going to be work. Everything's work. Like, you want somebody to cut a check? It's going to be work. Let's talk about consistency in submitting proposals. What What do you think is a, is a, is a good strategy or thought process behind sure. that? I would love to talk about that. Now, 
the number one way that sponsors want you to introduce yourself to them is by email because mm. they don't want to be surprised by a phone call. So your email has to have certain languaging in it, you know, to get past the gatekeepers and to get those deals done. So mm. uh, in your campaign, I would send a few emails don't take it personally if they don't answer the first email because sponsors are really, really busy. I would mm -hmm. send a few emails, and then what I would do is I would pick up the phone and actually call them. Use that low-tech tool of the telephone because sponsorship Whoa, is whoa, whoa. Picking up the telephone? Oh, my gosh. This is what <laughs> that. How do you do that? <laughs> Well, you know, I got to tell you, one of my first sponsors was FedEx, and I got FedEx by just cold calling them. I picked up the phone, I called FedEx, uh, one person passed me on to another, and then I got the guy who can greenlight the sponsorship, and remember I talked about renewals, well, mm -hmm. they were a multi-year sponsor of mine. They sponsored me for about four years. Um, wow. But now it's not the same as when I started. It's harder to reach sure. people on the phone. So now I would say send a few introductory emails. You could also send. But your not impossible, first of all. And, oh, and, and if so you're thinking about possible. those secondary market, like the yeah. other, like the the local, like um, credit union or something else, like are you kidding me? Yeah, right. You can reach them. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sure, sure. And then I also want to let you know that LinkedIn is the best social media platform for sponsorship because that's the professional platform. And you could send them a direct message through LinkedIn, and it sort of gets past all that email clutter that mm -hmm. they have in their inbox. So uh, mm -hmm. those are some great ways to introduce yourself to sponsors. Man, that's awesome. So, Linda, I can talk to you about this all day long, but we're about out of time. If somebody is listening to this and they want more information on Sponsor Concierge, what's the best way for them to reach out? Okay. Go to my website, which is successwithsponsors.com. That's success with sponsors.com uh, and you'll get some great information there and if you want to talk to me I do free sponsor strategy sessions you could tell me what you want to get sponsored we'll brainstorm about it uh, and we'll do some success strategies for you to get your sponsors that's awesome well hey Linda um, great having you on the show and thank you for sharing all that valuable information you shared today um, hope to hope the audience got a whole lot out of it and if you did and you're listening don't forget to subscribe to the podcast leave me a leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel mission matters business definitely give us a subscribe there and uh, don't and leave us some comments in the comment section love to hear what you're working on and what's going on in your business and in your world um, and Linda thanks again for coming on the show 